My story started when I took photos of wagging weenies and bouncing breasts on Bourbon Street. I wanted to understand where the beads that influenced drunk people to get naked and go wild came from. I'm one of my Djibouti. I decided to follow the bead trail, and it brought me to Fuzhou, China, where workers make $500 a year to make the beads, compared to the owner, Roger, who makes $2 million a year. This is the quantity of yesterday, which is 7,598 pounds. We keep this record so that we understand if they are working properly or they are not. Otherwise, if you don't give them a lease, they will work very slow. If you get less than this quantity, there's a 5% punishment. Otherwise, they will go to the toilet too much. <laughs> After I left the factory in China, I continued following the bead trail, and it brought me to Iraq, where Chevron gets the petroleum to make the plastic Mardi Gras beads. When I arrived, soldiers were celebrating Mardi Gras on the streets of Baghdad. My final journey brought me to Miami, Florida, where I met protesters who were demanding an end to the Iraq war and others who were demanding fair trade. I wanted to ask these protesters about the Mardi Gras beads, but when I arrived, the police immediately began to attack the crowd. Maybe I shouldn't have brought the Mardi Gras beads today. They seem to be a bit dangerous, as if you give the beads to the police today, they shoot you with rubber bullets and tear gas and pepper spray. After my journey ended, I concluded that bombs were dropped on Iraq so that oil companies can secure petroleum for plastic products made in Chinese sweatshops so boys and girls can go wild for cheap merchandise. It's an odd concoction, a self-destructive cocktail of capitalism. It's beads, breast, and bombs, a story of globalization gone wild.